You might be someone that's out there going, hey, I'm looking for my next horse. I wanna know what your process looks like. I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna go through the key questions and the key decisions that you need to be asking and that you need to make on the decision side to make it the right horse for you. Perhaps one of the biggest issues that people face in the horse industry is not being matched up with the right horse. I see so many times that people go out there and they buy horses more on an emotional state of mind than rather really looking at the type of horse that would actually best suit them. And guess what? If you want a pretty horse, you can still find a pretty horse that meets the requirements that a horse needs to meet to make it the right horse for you. I've trained so many horses have been deemed problem horses where people have gone out and bought horses but not utilized a structured process to decide like, hey, is this horse actually the right fit for me? And so I understand that you might be someone that's out there going, hey, I'm looking for my next horse. I wanna know what your process looks like. I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna go through the key questions and the key decisions that you need to be asking and that you need to make on the decision side so that you can go out there and look for the right horses and really filter down to the horses that are potentially the right fit. And you're not wasting a bunch of your time. You're not wasting other people's time, whether that's the sellers, or other professionals that are representing those horses. And even if you're a professional watching this video, and you're like, hey, I've got clients that come to me and they're looking at buying horses or they wanna sell a horse. These questions and decisions are really, really important to be able to work through. And the best part is, is it's very simple. It's not complicated necessary questions, but they're simple questions that we need to have very, very, very clear answers to. Because the more clear our answers are, the easier the decision-making process is on, hey, should we go look at that horse? Or, hey, does this horse actually check the boxes of what I'm looking for? And the process gives you some flexibility, right? You have to have a little bit of flex. Like I mentioned in our recent vlog where we just got back from, we just shot a vlog going on and taking you guys with us as I evaluated a sales horse for a client of ours, okay? And during that process, I share with you like, hey, if you're looking for a horse that is just perfect, 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 perfect confirmation, you're probably not gonna find it, right? So we have to use some discernment. We have to use a little bit of understanding that, hey, not every horse is just perfect but you definitely can have your must-haves, your wants, all of those things that are actually deal breakers. You gotta be clear on those. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'm gonna go sit down and get out of the truck because it's getting a little warm in here. Sit down and we'll keep talking about this. I'm gonna take you through the exact process. And the very first thing is making that decision of what kind of horse do you actually need? What is the education level? What are the skills that that horse needs to know today for it to be the right fit for you. What does the temperament need to be of the horse for it to be the right fit for you? What is the temperament? What is the personality? What is the character of the horse that would make the horse the right fit for you? So, so, so important because that personality is going to affect so much of how that horse is to manage on a daily basis, how that horse is to interact with, how that horse is to go to work with and enjoy riding and being around. Right? What type of breed would be best suitable for the type of horse that you're looking for? So that you can actually go enjoy being with that horse. How tall should that horse be? And this is actually where a really big mistake gets made by people trying to buy horses. And we ask ourselves, well, how old should the horse be? What is the right age for that horse to be the right fit for you? And oftentimes the big mistake that I see people make is that they assume that the older a horse is, the more educated that horse will be. A lot of times I hear most frequently that I don't want to buy a horse that's under six years old or five years old, right? A lot of people steer clear of three and four-year-old horses because the assumption is, is that they're not that educated. They're not that experienced, right? And so the alternative assumption is the older horses, the more experiences that horse has, right? The more education that horse has. And that's not always the case. That's not always the case. And I'm not advocating for you to then go buy a really young horse, right? A two-year-old is only going to have so much experience and so much education. But you could have an older three-year-old or a four-year-old that could be very well educated, could be have the right personality, the right characteristics that you're looking for. And oftentimes, though, most frequently when this mistake gets made, what happens is somebody goes and buys a nine-year-old a 12-year-old, a 15-year-old horse under the assumption that this horse is going to be kid broke and this horse is going to be just a solid citizen with no more motivation in life and just wants to get along and is really well trained. And that's not always the case. 
It's not always the case. So you can't make the assumption that age is correlated to education. You need to determine what that education level is of the horse and the skills that the horse needs to know, and you need to evaluate that. But then you also need to make a decision on age. It, what is the age range that you would be most comfortable with? And you're going to have your own specific reasons, whether it's developmental reasons, whether it's showing reasons, whatever the case is for you. You're going to have an age range that you are most comfortable buying in. And that is great. That's perfectly fine. You need to determine what that age range is. I just want to make sure that you don't pick that age range under the assumption that it's going to be equivalent to the education. Those two numbers, or those two factors, age and education, are not correlated. In most instances, they should be analyzed and evaluated independently. The next thing you need to determine is what is your absolute haves? What do you have to have? Does it have to be a Palomino? Does it have to be a quarter horse? Does it have to have perfect, perfect, perfect confirmation? You're probably not going to find that, right? But what is the must haves? Does it have to have the long flowing mane? Does it have to have a flying lead change? Does it have to trail ride? Like, what are the must haves? haves on your list. This is kind of the dream list, okay? Then what are the absolute cannot haves? Like the absolutely must not be a factor, right? I have one client, no white legs, no white hairs on the legs, right? Perfectly fine. That's a hard limit for that particular client, okay? What are your have nots? Absolutely will not buy a stallion absolutely will not buy a mare, absolutely will not buy a gilding, absolutely will not buy a crypt orchid, right? Like different strokes for different folks, but you want to be very clear on these things. You want to write these things down and make these decisions of what must I absolutely have? What can I absolutely not have be a part of this equation? Because that will help you immediately, immediately filter down horses. So that when you when you look at a page and there's 25 horses and you have your list of your haves, your have-nots, your education level, it's so easy to get rid of the horses that do not meet those requirements, right? That way we don't get caught by shiny object syndrome when we're horse buying and then we waste our time, we waste the seller's time, we waste our trainer's time, we waste, we just waste a lot of time and effort and energy because the horse ultimately does not meet the requirements. So be picky but realize, like, if you're like, I have to have perfect confirmation, right? You can find a horse with a really great confirmation, right? But that doesn't mean that they're going to be perfect, per se. There is a level of reasonability that has to come into this because we're dealing with living creatures. But make sure, feel free to be particular. And the more particular are, then the more fine your search will be as you go. You do not want this to be vague. Sometimes people come in there and they're like, I just want to find a great horse. And it's like, that's too vague. We need to whittle this down. We need to make some critical decisions. The next factor that has to be determined is very simple. It's very straightforward. It is what it is, and it is your budget. What is your budget that you currently have? How much are you willing to spend on the horse that meets these requirements that you're looking for, okay? Your budget is your budget. I mentioned earlier in the video that some people were like, says that my budget depends on the right horse. And it's like, it doesn't. There is a ceiling. There is a max amount of money that you're willing to spend. That is your budget. Of course, if you find a horse that does not meet your full requirement list, you may not be willing to pay the full amount of your budget. You're willing to pay X amount of dollars for that horse because that's what you think that horse is worth. But your budget is the amount of money that you're saying is available to go buy the right horse for you that you're looking for. You need to determine this because immediately that's going to whittle out a lot of horses that do not fall within that budget range. And also, if you're consulting a professional, which leads me to my next point, then they can make sure that they're actually finding a horse that meets your budget right? That falls within the level of affordability. And if, if for some reason, you, what you're looking for as far as your requirements is far beyond what your budget allows for, then a professional can know that and they can be very objective with you about that and say, listen, like you're looking for a horse that is $50,000 and your budget is $20,000. So these are the things that we need to understand about the current market and how we can adjust your budget and what do we need to do to find you the right horse? And there's a lot of options there. There's a lot of options. I alluded to a few earlier in the video. And throughout this process, you want to be very objective about your own experience, your own skill sets. Do you feel qualified to go and evaluate a horse for yourself? I want to be very objective about this because sometimes we can make assumptions about how much we know about our own experiences. And a lot of us like to bolster ourselves up 
in saying that we know more or think we know more than we actually do. We're human. Okay, so I'm not pointing fingers. I mean, I do that in my own instances when you get yourself overfaced. You don't want to do that when you're horse shopping. You want to be very upfront with yourself. And if you need to hire a professional at, to consult, to be there to represent you, to be able to have their, their eyes and their experience and their perspective and an objective perspective to help you find the right horse, go hire a professional if you feel like you need it. Because it's this process of buying horses for some people can become very emotional and you do not want to purchase emotionally when you're looking for horse. You want to make sure that this is objective. It can be exciting. It should be fun and it should be exciting, right? It can and it should be exciting. I'll, I'll make sure that we know that we, that we can have fun doing this. But sometimes having someone as a professional that can keep that objective perspective and have that level of experience that you can benefit from to make sure that you're finding the right horse for you and what you want to do so that you can go have accomplish your goals and go have accomplish the dreams that you have that in that you want to share with this horse then hire a professional if you feel like that's going to be the best fit for you it'd be some of the best money you've ever spent because it's way less expensive than buying the wrong horse and here's the very last point y'all do not make assumptions if you are curious, if you're wondering something about a particular horse, ask the question. There aren't dumb questions. You're looking at investing money and buying an animal that is living and breathing that you're going to be responsible for and that is going to be your partner in the future. If you're not sure about something, ask the dang question. If you're not sure and you need to feel like you need to go in person, go see that horse in person. Take a professional with you. Take a friend with you to have an outside perspective and go see that in person. You do not want to go into these situations with assumptions, right? We sell a select few horses each year with, through our sales horse program. We do not sell a ton of horses. It's just a small part of our business because we like training horses and providing them with high quality educations and finding them amazing homes, right? We don't let people make assumptions. In fact, if someone's not a professional, we require them to come and actually ride the horse, meet the horse, spend time with the horse at our facility. Why do we do that? Because in the past, We've had buyers buy horses sight unseen. They've made assumptions. We've gone off of what they said they were looking for, what they said would be the best fit for them. And then in fact, the horse didn't become the right fit for them. And so how do we do that as professionals? We take the ability to make assumptions off the table and we say, hey, if you're not actually a professional that's established in the industry that has a lot of experience and has the skill set to take a horse that even still may not be the perfect fit, but you have the skill set to make sure, get that horse adapted and moved over into your program and you're more of someone that enjoys for horses recreationally, then we want you to actually come here, try the horses that we have available, get to meet them, find out if they're the right fit, because we don't want to make those assumptions. And so if you happen to be somebody that's actually in the market or will be in the market at some point, and you're interested in finding the right horse for you, like I mentioned, we sell just a select few horses a year. I'll put the link down below to our first access program, which is very simple and straightforward. You tell us exactly what you're looking for in a horse, if we happen to have a horse in our barn that's coming available soon that meets exactly what you're looking for, we'll reach out to you and introduce you to the horse, tell you a little bit about the horse, and let you have first access to say, yes or no, I'm interested in the horse before we ever publicly make that horse available to the general public, right? Because we want to find these horses amazing homes. We only sell three to five horses a year usually. It's not a very big program because it's just a small part of what we do. We focus on a lot of other things in our business, but we occasionally have really, really nice horses for sale. So y'all, I hope that you found this video insightful and helpful to you. And if you ever have any questions, you always drop them down in the comments. You can shoot us an email at office at coltwoodshorsemanship.com. We have a lot of resources down below for you in the show notes as well. And we look forward to seeing you on the next video.